Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted, with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hi, how we sales. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting, Life Unscripted. I'm so grateful to have you here today on Savvy, talking about the power of live streaming. You're an award, Emmy Award winning camera operator and uh, turn your passion of broadcasting and several entrepreneurial endeavors into a wonderful company, H. JZ Productions in 2000, and you've been kicking butt ever since, but you're going to share ever since the pandemic and, and going forward, live st- streaming has been a great tool for business owners out there, and we're going to share how they can get the most out of that. But before we go into all those yummy details, just give a brief history to our audience about how you came to where you are today. Yeah, uh, I went to college uh, specifically for television production. I knew in high school I wanted to be a sports camera operator. Uh, so I went to colleges that had uh, that sort of uh, major. And I found, luckily found my way into sports TV. Mm-hmm. I traveled with uh, NBC Sports and the World Wrestling Entertainment, WWE, as a camera operator for over 20 years. Mm-hmm. And I, I always had a business on the side, uh, HJZ Productions, where we would staff sports and entertainment events for our clients. And over the course of time, it, it kind of grew and grew and grew and grew. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was making way more money as a business owner than a traveling camera operator, I just didn't see the light. Mm -hmm. And, uh, (laughs) you know, shortly before the pandemic started, uh, my wife and I together started a second business. I was going to kind of work parallel to our first business, but Mm -hmm. then the pandemic shut everything down. Yeah. Yeah. And that, is that when you, well, no, when did you start the Veridity? Yeah, so we started the second business, Veridity or VES, um, right like a year before the pandemic. And it was basically to serve our clients that traveled uh, their core travel people into the New York area. And we would take Mm -hmm. on the burden of payroll for them. We train them in workplace harassment, sexual harassment, everything that you would need to do as an employer. But yeah. uh, we wanted to keep it separate from the other business because everyone that worked for us locally was in a union. These people, mm-hmm. since they were traveled, were not union members. Got it. But then uh, the pandemic happened, shut everything down. We mm-hmm. we needed to earn uh, money like everybody else. And we pivoted and gotten into, you know, with my television background, got into live streaming. Mm-hmm. And with the help of people in my network, we uh, gave the company a, a, a new life. That's awesome. And, you know, I found that for a lot of businesses after and during the pandemic and even after have totally done what you did, which is does that pivot, sometimes not even a huge pivot that totally transformed their business. We had one business that was clearly a laundry mat where people would come in. They didn't go pick up and delivery type thing that people would come and do their laundry, which in one of the major cities they were at wasn't a possibility anymore. So then they just, you know, they had all the listing of all their clients that would come in and they just went knocking on doors. Could we take your laundry? We'll bring it back. We won't charge you anything. It became so huge that even after the pandemic, people are liking it a lot more for people to come and pick up their laundry. So it's amazing. Uh, it's actually offered a lot more opportunities for some businesses to explore and actually expand and grow even further than before. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we transit, we started out the live streaming. Um, mm-hmm. We tested things out on the temple, the synagogue I belong to, mm-hmm. and uh, we made all the mistakes we could make, but everyone <laughs> was grateful for that. They were able to see what was going on. Yeah. Um, and then we started into our, these virtual productions for clients with mm-hmm. athletes and mm-hmm. concerts and cooking shows. And as we started to emerge from pa- the pandemic and uh, events started to come back, we do these hybrid events events for you know companies big and small anywhere from um streaming worldwide to you know streaming an event uh to one city it all depends on what the client's needs are we have all different package levels yeah and i love i love this um we were doing something in manhattan a networking slash interview series where once a month we would interview a 
a subject in Manhattan. We'd sell the tickets. We'd have food, the whole jazz. Well, they listen to the wonderful wisdom of our guest, And then afterward, we all like get together and have a networking event. Um, right. But that all shifted. So for people who are not familiar with the live streaming world, how did this transact or what does it look like? The picture of say, now it's not on, it's not live, but it's live streaming or hybrid. What are the different versions and what does it kind of look like for business? Yes. So for our business, we created these uh, contributor kits. Uh, that's what we named them. They're um, high-end gaming laptops uh, with enough processing power to handle what we needed to handle. Uh, we shipped them out with uh, high-def cameras, uh, professional USB microphones, ring lights, Ethernet cables, mm -hmm. and they're loaded on uh, the pr proper programs are loaded on to the computers so we can log in. as soon as the computer hits the internet it comes up in our system we see it we can log into the computer from anywhere in the world and take control walk the contributor through how to mount the camera how to mount the mm -hmm. microphone and we send in directions with it but then we can walk them through it and then we bring them into our production we can take control of the camera make sure it's focused um, the lighting is good and control the audio and we uh that's how we you know do a lot of these virtual productions is with these contributor kits we have about 25 of them wow and this takes it to a whole new universe because in the past they'd have to hire you to come on in a plane and get on over right. to their facility and physically help them set up this is tremendous that you know and this is the age of technology that's made things that we probably wouldn't even thought possible 10 years ago, possible today where the cameraman can stream right into my house, take control of my computer, help me get the lighting set up because often just the difference to a super professional done live stream or video is really the lighting and the setup and yeah. having a professional there to help you do that makes all the world a uh, difference. And, you know, anyone could do it. We we've done this with some of the biggest athletes there are on the planet from yeah. tiger woods to charles barkley magic johnson um travis kelsey who just mm -hmm. won the super bowl just to name a few mm -hmm. uh so we you know these people can do it anyone can do it yeah yeah it's just you know just the tweaking of the the professional telling you okay just move the light a little bit here or just mm -hmm. add a light over here because my husband he he does this for a living so he said three-point lighting whatever so yep, he'll he'll right tell here. me exactly exactly <laughs> and uh so sometimes if i walk in no that's not right let me fix it <laughs> but no he he's an expert on that but it's great that you can stream in help them take control of their computer and also just give them the tweak so they can make it super pro professional because as someone once said to me years ago um, um, yes, you could just turn on your cell phone and start streaming. Um, and will it look professional and speak to the quality of your brand? Or will people go like, ah, that's a, a shabby, a shabby piece of work there. Do I really want to work with them? Because everything kind of reflects your brand and what you're trying to put out. So you want it to be the best possible quality. Yeah. And we have uh, certain protocols in place to help mm -hmm. protect that. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we do, uh, we call it a tech check. So uh, we try to do it a, a week prior or at least three or four days prior to the event. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to basically we want to see where is the person going to set up? What is the camera shot going to look like? What is the Internet speed like uh we mm -hmm. want to do it at the time of the day of the event so yeah. if the internet it goes up and down we we want to know what the internet is going to be like make sure no one is going to be on no one else is going to be on the internet at that time mm -hmm. um and then we frame the camera shot and we ask the person listen please don't touch yeah. you know the setup until the event that way the day of the event they can you know take their time logging in and not much has to be done yeah. Yeah. That's a, the great point. I remember uh, a couple of months ago, someone called in and they said, normally this is great. I do my interviews at 1 PM, but she was tuning in at a different time and the sun was just hitting her where yeah. I couldn't see her face anymore. I was like, hi, are you in there? And she's like, wait, I got to close things, turn off the light. Like she had to really figure things out because it was a different time of the day and it, it shifted the lighting. If you're sitting next to a window or something. We just had that the other day that, or yeah. the, the person we did the live stream with was in California and she mm. promised it would be dark, that no light would come in <laughs> and it took longer than it expected. And of course, she was all mm. lit up on the side of her face and mm. we were, it was killing us. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and, you know, if you don't do this for a living and, and I don't have that professional eye, like my husband does, he will just see something immediately and be like, no, this is off or, you know, your, your angles off or, you know, what's that call where they put you where, um, three point or you're off to the side a little bit. What's that called? Yeah. Uh, you just like looking that way for an interview or straight ahead confessional style. Well, no, because the screening shot is like, you're, you're not in the middle. You're kind of Three, Michael. three quarter. What do they call it? You're off centered, basically. Off center. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. There's a name for it. But anyway, anyway. So that is totally great. Now, now you also said you do hybrid. So say someone's excited and they would like to do, say, a live event, but also have it streaming at the same time. Yeah. What does that look like? Do you come on out? Do you work with them? Yeah, we have a lot of uh, a, a lot of equipment. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, we we, we have a, a a massive streaming computer that. To, can take nine cameras uh so typically we do uh corporate events with three or four cameras depending on the size how many people mm -hmm. are talking mm -hmm. and uh the clients will provide us with a powerpoint deck uh you know to help get their point across and we give them our uh clicker that uh when the speaker wants to advance the slide it sends us a notification we change the slide on the screen in person mm -hmm. and then we change it in the virtual space as well and to take to you know step up the production we we have some graphics where maybe we have like a two a two box look where the person speaking is in a small box and the powerpoint deck slide mm -hmm. is in a bigger box so they're on screen at the same time and we'll cut between mm -hmm. full screen of the person full screen of the powerpoint then the two box look um mm -hmm. And it, it all depends on what is needed. You know, we have a, t a graphics team, an engineering team, take care of, uh, you know, whatever the client needs help with. Yeah. And let's also talk to, for anyone out there who just doesn't have a quite of a handle of what expertise is required for this. Cause my husband's done live events and B roll for video editing. He's done later for corporate clients. It is a lot of work. And, uh, you yeah. know, he could be there. 46 hours, 64 hours, depending on, on a 10 minute slot, even um, it's so much work that um, people don't see. Like when you were just talking about the side box or whatever, just a lot of splicing and putting all that together. Um, uh, I can't do it, but it, it's a lot of work and seeing him work on a project. It is really, um, yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah. I, it's, there's a big planning phase, you know, two to three months that goes into planning these events. Mm -hmm. You got to go uh, do a site survey or a location scout to see the event space, wherever it's being held. Uh, what kind of lights do we need? Do we need screens? Do we need projectors? You know, what is needed to make the production or the event what it should be? So uh, mm -hmm. the people in person have the experience that you want them to have. And then the virtual audience is getting the same experience as is as if they were there. Yeah. And I love for people um, listening in who are thinking this could be just the marketing tool or the upcoming speaking event I have to do for my corporation. This could be just the thing to explode us onto the platform and to have people really see us in a, in a new professional light. Um, but also I want them to get the handle of what, what it takes to make one of these go forward and that it's worth the cost. Because I think often when they see the end result, like, oh my gosh, that's so expensive. And like one person who had said, who was a video production person, he said, well, yeah, you could put on your cell phone and just sit there with one of those circle lights and it'll kind of look, eh. It'll, it'll look like that. It'll look like that. Yeah. yeah. It won't look like what you see on TV. If you want TV quality, it, it's going to cost a pretty penny, but it's going to be worth it because it's going to be something that's evergreen and you could use for your company for many, many years to come. And what, what we tell people is we, we have a content delivery network. So we, we advise, you know, our clients not to stream to Facebook and YouTube and, mm -hmm. and those places is like stream into our network. Mm -hmm. And then we could embed our player on your website. That yeah. way you're driving traffic to your own site and you own the followers, not uh, you know, social media platform. Yeah. And, and that's a really, really good point, Howie. Uh, I made that mistake early on when I started my 
my podcast, I had built my audience fairly quickly, 45,000 in six months, wow. 77,000 in, in a year. And, but it was all on blog talk radio. And mm -hmm. so uh, I didn't get a or start up a website until two, three years in. And then you have to start, you know, oh, come over here, people. Transitioning. Yeah. 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 And so it's that hard part. You really, really want to pull people into your website, your business website and build that relationship on your own. Play. It's like bringing them to your, you know, your establishment. Yeah. If you had a brick yeah. and mortar, you don't want exactly. them to be in Amazon's facility looking at your stuff. You want them to be in your facility. Exactly. You want to control the advertising, not someone else. Exactly. Well, this has been phenomenal. I don't want anyone to leave without finding out how they can find out more about this, get um, a virtual live streaming uh, event set up. How could they do that? Yeah, you can uh, HowieZales.com or VeridityEntertainment.com. But uh, if you click on HowieZales.com, you can get to Veridity's website. And we offer a 10% discount for our clients' first time working with us. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we look forward to working with uh, new people. Yeah, yeah. And I just have one personal question. Uh, sure. Being that you entered into the realm of filming sports and stuff, did you have a really huge passion for sports did you do sports in college or high school yeah i i wanted to play professional baseball but i knew i needed a, i knew i needed to fall back and uh, i grew up in new york and we'd always go to hockey basketball and baseball games and i'd always watch the camera people and then it kind of uh my mom had told me that her first cousin was a new york times photographer so mm. it was somewhat uh in the blood yay well, that's so cool. That's so awesome. Yeah. Well, I thank you so much, Howie, coming today to show your great gifts and talents and um, savvy broadcasting. Thank you. Super grateful. Thank you. Like, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more savvy episodes and savvy biz tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com.